Hi everybody, it's Jim from Sprague Wood Turning. This week we're going to take this maple bowl and combine it with some red and white tinted resin to make a Canadian flag themed bowl. So the first order of business is to get a waste block on the bottom of this bowl. So this is a twice turned bowl. And as you can see, it was turned in 2020. So I want to clean off the anchor seal off of the very bottom. And I've drilled a hole through the dead center of the waste block slash face plate that I have. And it will go in right there. You can see it there. It will go into that little hole that I made in the base of the bowl that was dead on center. And then once we get our hot melt glue on there, things should line up perfectly. Now that the glue is hardened up, we can put it on the lathe and trim away all of this excess anchor seal, or not excess, the anchor seal that was on the surface of the bowl. The main reason I do that is because that anchor seal could be covering some cracks. So you want to expose those cracks, especially if you're um, you, you know, combining this with resin, which this piece is going to be. Um, just showing a little bit of shear scraping here on the outside of the bowl before I move to the inside. This wasn't exactly a perfect piece of wood. Um, there was some checking in it, but it was the right form. So that's kind of why I went with it. There you can see some wormholes too. Lots of character. So with good sharp gouges, you shouldn't have any issues cutting this material back. Um, I just took this off of the grinder. So, you know, it's, it's cutting very, very nicely. You can see there's some figurative grain in there. And at the time, I didn't really realize it, but this was actually a crotch piece, but it didn't really have a ton of figure in it, that's for sure. So if you hate sanding, then it is important to have a sharp gouge and that your tool work is good. If you have those things in place, then that will really limit how much sanding you will do and you'll actually save money in the end. So what I'm going to do here is cut a groove in the very top of this piece and I'm actually going to um, expose both sides of the resin pour uh, the next day. So that's why this groove is really, really wide. I want to make sure that I had lots of thickness there to uh, expose the rim. I was worried about this piece uh, weeping the resin through it and then staining the bowl where I was going to put the resin in the rim. So I'm using some Starbond Thin just to harden up the grain. And you, if you look down in the groove, you'll see how that the Starbond is actually weeping through there. So that kind of shows you that if you hadn't have done that, you probably would have got some resin staining in, inside the bowl. So that's the main reason why I'm why I'm doing this. I certainly don't want that to come through. And there I'm just pointing out some, I'll call them stress cracks. So I want to fill those in as well. Uh, that'll help us further on down the road here. Just doing some layout here. So of course the Canadian flag is red, white, and red with of course the red maple leaf on the white part in the center. So I'm just gonna do some layout here. Now, traditionally the white part, not traditionally, the white part of our flag is wider than the red, but you know, I initially put it on here and it just, it didn't look right. So I, I decided to just make three uh, parts of it equal. And with the red maple leaf, I, th I think that was the right choice. It just, it just, 
symmetry it looks better on something that's round if i was doing this on say a cutting board that would be a totally different thing but on a round object like this i really like the layout of the three equal parts these are actually some pieces of plexiglass that i've wrapped in duct tape and you're going to see I'm going to hold them in place just on one side with some CA glue. And what we're going to do is pour this rim, the red and the white, all in one shot. And then pull out these little spacers. And hopefully it works. I've never done this before. So, um, again, I, I like to try new things on the channel here. So this week we're going to be using Artcast again from Designer Epoxy. And it's traditionally a little thicker than Deepcast or the Pro Series. So all I did with, with these was I actually took them out and put them in the sun for about an hour prior to using them. And they seem to flow quite well. So we're going to be using white ice for the white part of the flag and pearl red for the red part. All right, so I have no idea if this is gonna work or not, <laughs> but uh, let's find out. So overall, I'm happy with this piece. If I had to, if I could do this again, I probably would have waited a little bit longer to pull those little blockers out. Uh, once the resin had cured up a little bit further, you probably wouldn't have had as much bleed over, but you know, in the end, it's kind of artistic. So I'm happy with it. <laughs> well, I'll pretty much call that a success. Uh, I'm just going to get the torch and burn off these bubbles. Well, all right, that's step one. See you tomorrow for step two. All right, so it is the next day. And as you can see, we've had a little bit of bleeding over. Um, you know, again, it's just kind of the style that I was going for. And I fully expected this was gonna happen. Um, so anyway, what we're gonna do now is expose the sides and then we'll get our maple leaf carved out and get that with some resin in it. So there may be some of you wondering, well, why didn't you pour the, the red maple leaf uh, the same day? And you know, I, 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 I could have, I wasn't really, um, crunched for time when I initially did the first pour. So that's why I figured that, you know, I would let the rim cure up and then go back and do the maple leaf afterwards. Um, that way, if there's any filling that needed to be done, it could be done at that point as well. So that's, that's kind of why I went in that direction. That way, of course, we make sure that the leaf is perfectly centered in the bowl and Everything is symmetrical. And the other th great thing about Artcast is that it cures in 16 to 24 hours. So, you know, you don't have to wait days and days for this to, you know, to work on this project. Literally, I, I poured that uh, in the afternoon, I think it was. And then first thing in the morning, that's when I trimmed back and exposed the rim. So here we're just doing some cleanup, making sure the wall thickness is good. Um, here I'm finding the center point again. And it's funny because I never thought ever about using a laser level on, on a wood turning. <laughs> but now, but now I've, I've used it, you know, like two times. So I guess it is a useful thing on a lathe, but you know, I, I never thought that I would ever use a laser level, but here it is. And you know what? It works absolutely fantastic. So I've just put some carbon paper underneath of this. And of course, I'm just tracing it out. And that will get transferred to the bowl. And it's pretty much spot on. So I just recently bought a Dremel tool. And this was the one of the cutters that came with it. So it came in the kit. So I can't even really tell you where to get it. I got it from Amazon, I guess. Um, but it's, it's, um, it's actually a really nice burr. And what I was doing with the marker there was making sure that I wasn't going to go through and turn this into a funnel. 
So that that's important. I don't have a ton of thickness here to deal with. So I figured that it was probably safe to do that. And I bought these carving tools, I don't know how many years ago, and I've never used them. So this is the first time that I've actually used, actually had a carving tool in my hand ever. And I'm just using it to really clean up all the sharp points and trying to make things straight. This is a Typhoon bit. You've seen this a, a number of times on my channel here. And again, there's a link in the description to uh, Lee Valley if you're interested in getting any of these Typhoon bits. Uh, they are really good bits. If you're going to do any amount of carving, I highly recommend uh, using the Typhoon bits. And the very last thing, I'll call this a bottoming gouge because I'm not a carver. <laughs> and I'm just using it to just flatten off any high points prior to pouring any resin. Work great. Well, hey, it isn't perfect, but um, not bad for somebody, I guess, that doesn't do any carving. Uh, I'm going to pan this out and show you actually the kit here. If you're curious, there's the kit. I think I got it at Lee Valley or Busy Bee here in Canada. Long time ago. I don't even know if they still sell it. Let's mix some resin up. So we are using the Artcast again, and of course we're going to be using the same pearl red that we put in the rim. I think I mixed up about six ounces. All right, I know that there's a lot of resin there. I don't have a ton of thickness on the bottom of this. So, I mean, the goal here is just to trim this excess off in the morning and uh, we should be able to get into our first coat of finish. Anyway, I'm going to throw this in the pressure pot overnight. See you guys tomorrow. All right, so it is the next day. Here I'm using the Hercules just to trim back the resin. Really important here that you don't take off too much material. I just really want it to expose the leaf and then that was it if you go too deep then you're going to see probably the base color wood color coming through the uh the inlay that's in the very center of the bowl so you really don't want to do that you'll also probably notice that before i put the bowl in the pressure pot i just swished the resin back and forth to fill in some of the um that cracked grain that was up by the white part on the bowl so that's why you probably would see that there and it, it didn't migrate i did that purposely and it actually did a good job it it filled in those areas and we still had to use some star bond afterwards but for the most part it was mostly filled in by the resin all right so finally on to sanding three and a half inch dipple disc from sandpaper.ca and what I initially did was sand it from 60 to 180. And then I did some more filling on the end grain. You'll hear, see it here in a second. And once, so after that filling goes in, then I like to grind it back to the surface of the wood and then turn the lathe on and blend it all in once you've got it kind of, the majority of it sanded away. If you don't, it's still gonna be there. Uh, CA glue is pretty tough stuff to sand. Triple E buffing compound from the be all buffing system just to take off any of those fine little scratches after it was sanded to 800 and then just clean it off with some denatured alcohol prior to finish. All right, this is the first coat of Waterlux original VOC medium sheen. Well, there you go. What do you think? This will, I'm pretty sure this will take three coats. Uh, it's got, it's got some issues with it. Um, it's the back side. And I mean issues as in, you know, there's some, there's some bug holes. Um, got a little bit of cracking 
going on in the end grain, but overall, it's still a pretty nice piece. See you tomorrow for the second coat. Same process, use the triply buffing compound between coats, clean it off with a denatured alcohol, and then put your coat of finish on. And I will say that this piece did end up taking three coats of finish. I might have been able to get away with two, but three is probably better. All right, well, good morning. This is the second coat of Waterlux, original VOC, medium sheen. As you can see, I, I load the rag up pretty heavy with it when I first start. Well, there you go. That's what it looks like after the second coat. I never actually really no noticed this before, but there's actually a fair bit of chatoyance in this piece. I think that it is going to take three coats. The end grain seems to be really soaking it up here. So what I will do is do the third coat the same way as the second. And we will see you when we're doing the bottom. So after three coats of finish, we're finally ready to part this piece off of the lathe. What I like to do is trim away any of that excess glue prior to using the parting tool here. And this is a 3 16 inch parting tool from Crown. And then just finish it off with handsaw. Here we are on the vacuum chuck. I think it only took three attempts to get it on there good enough. I forgot that I had that little hole in the base. I was like, hmm, I wonder, hopefully I don't want to expose any uh, of the red maple leaf going through it, but things were fine. And last little bit of sanding. I usually start at 180, and since it's all wood on the bottom, finished it at 320. All right, let's have a last little talk about this week's bowl. Well, all right, let's have a last little look at this beautiful little bowl tell me what you think down in the comments as you can see it is super shiny uh, the leaf itself I must say for the first time kind of carving like this doesn't look too bad uh, not real sharp in a couple of areas but overall it's you know it's not bad uh, the rim detail like I said in the video if I was going to do this again, I would leave those spacers in there longer. Wait for the resin to cure up a little bit before pulling them out. And you wouldn't have as much bleed over. But you know what? I'm good with it. And I realize that the proportion is off a little bit. But in my mind, it just, it didn't go. So, you know, ordinarily probably the white would be out to here. And then you just have two little red slivers here. And it, I don't know, it just didn't seem to work on a round piece like this. So that's why I made three three even pieces. Uh, here's the very back side. Still need two more coats of finish and it will be good to go. The piece ended up being nine inches across and two inches tall. And um, it was a fun project. I should show this up in this area here. This is where I let that red resin kind of flow in to fill up any of those little cracks you see there. There's probably some on this side too. And on the back side where we had some wormholes coming through, I actually used the black CA glue to fill those in and it did a good job. It's only, I don't know, there's about six of them here on the very back. Uh, anyway, it's a fun project. Uh, a couple of new things for me. The carving was certainly new. Uh, using these spacers and with the two pores, that was certainly new to me. And, uh, you know, I'm always learning. And, of course, if you guys get any advice to pass along, I'm more than happy to listen to it. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so we haven't... We haven't uh, had a chance to really celebrate Canada Day here in a couple of years because of COVID, just like probably every other place in the world. So this week, or sorry, yeah, so today there should be a bunch of Canada Day celebrations. So, hey, if you got, if you got a chance, go out and uh, partake in any of the parades or any of the events that's going on. Um, being locked up here for two years really sucked. And now that we're over the hump and, see, you know, COVID's in our rearview mirror, 
need to move on with our lives and get things back to normal. All right, well, that's it. I've got an awesome bowl coming up for the 55,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. So come on back for that next week. I almost really want to keep it and make another one, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give it away. So, uh, I guess that's it till next week. Take care. Stay safe. Don't forget that bell. Please share my videos with your friends and have fun at Canada day and have a couple of wobbly pops on me. See you next week.